uh, my studio space and took the smaller room to as my 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 room to sleep. It was really important for me to separate these two environments, you know, the resting environment and then the environment I'm working, uh, not just in the studio but also teaching and uh, and also doing some administrative work. But I also consider my studio space uh, in my basement. Uh, that that is where I store like all my paper. I store all my old my my painting, my large scale paintings. So I do ink drawings uh, mostly. I work with watercolors too, water media, but mostly I have been doing ink drawings and and some printmaking. Um, but the ink drawings are the the main uh, my main focus right now as art production, and I do do paint on paper and do paint also on wood panels. My bachelor's is not in art, it was in, in, in design. So I was working mostly with digital interface and producing, you know, using Photoshop and Illustrator to produce material. So then during grad school, I could, could catch up and experiment with a lot of different medias, but ink uh, and watercolor are just water medias. Uh, it was the thing that I kept going back to or in the end, pretty much of the entire cycle of grad school, I went back to. I have an ease uh, to work with it, so there's this practicality with the material that's natural to me to work with, uh, that I that I associate the most. And but also, what I love about it is the building of layers, uh, how you can you know stretch uh, the the values, the, the the tonal values of your of your composition to like 15 uh, different shades. Um, to two or maybe just one uh, you can just be playful and, and work as quick as you want uh, letting the drawing flow and, 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 and lead the way where, where it goes having uh, lived in Baltimore and being influenced by, by Baltimore uh, for, for six years and then you know being also from Brazil and how this collapse happened uh, in my life so I was, I'm trying to represent that you know, the process of drawing is, is, a, is a meditative process for me to understand that image or to dig in those symbols or meanings behind that image. Uh, and then sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the image is strong, sometimes the drawing is not strong. So these are just two examples. It was a collaboration with the students that I taught in, 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 uh, in an institution in Brazil. And these images actually from one of uh, the students' photos. So in the end, I asked them to, if I could also draw from the photos that they were bringing and to create this installation. When you put the two images together, um, you start like creating narrative, you know, or at least people on their own, based on their own experience, start to connect those images. And that's when I, I think it's really worth it, uh, you know, to create that communication and let the, the pieces do their own thing. But that's my process. So. You know, it starts with collecting the images, then drawing and meditating on them, uh, and then creating them, uh, creating them, selecting the composition, but also uh, putting together a show where the images uh, are coherent together. Thank you so much for 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 being around, uh, for watching this video until the end, and uh, and I hope you enjoyed it and and that it was a little bit insight from my work. And please contact me uh, or Hot Sauce Arts Collective. If, um, if you want to get in contact, you know, talk more about work or you think it would be uh, awesome to show together or just uh, want to purchase some of my work, mm, I'm always open to between these conversations. Thank you very much. Bye bye. fascinated by the reflectiveness of water which can be so calm or it can be rippled or the power where water falls uh, or the waves hit the rocks i feel like every blank canvas every day every piece of paper is a new beginning Thank you so much for visiting my studio in the Mill Center in Hanman. I'm Elizabeth Cadwallader. 
I have been painting for about 20 years and printmaking for approximately six. My main uh, media are oil, watercolor, printmaking, and occasionally acrylic and collage. Let me take you on a quick overview tour of my studio. I've been in this studio since the beginning of the year and moved down from one over twice as big. So it's been a bit of a challenge for me to find the best way to work in here and to fit in all my possessions, which wasn't easy. First of all, I have this work table in the center of the room so that I can get to it easily from any of my other work areas. And I've divided the rest of the room into basically four separate areas. This is my printing area over here, printing press and supplies underneath. And then going around to the other corner, I have storage area and library. Here is my painting area. I have easel and a rolling cart here with my brushes, another rolling cart with paints and mediums. Um, this is the sketch that I did in the Lake District and I am working from that. During the pandemic, I was able to keep working. I had a solo show coming up and was working hard towards that. Of course, it had to be canceled, which was very disappointing. And shortly after that, I broke my wrist. So I'm eager to get back to painting again. Um, on this wall, where I've hung most of the paintings, I have my watercolor table with, um, a, again, a rolling cart next to it with supplies that I need. And over here, the last area is my framing and matting table. I paint more landscape than any other subject, and I find that I usually look for a path or a roadway in the scenes that attract me. Uh, to me, a path or a road is a way into the future. It's an exploration, a promise of what's to come. There's a tension between being in a beautiful place that um, we really like, but still the urge to explore and go further is always there. Recently, I've been painting rooftops. I'm fascinated by the variety of rectangular and triangular shapes and the angles that they produce when uh, in front of one another. I'm working on this one uh, in process, trying out a more abstract shape background. I'm going to try a monotype technique that uses watercolor instead of the oil paint that I generally use. You need to mix the watercolor with the dishwasher drying aid in order to get it to stick to the plexiglass. So I've prepared this plate. Uh, I've made a register on the printing press so that I can get the paper and the print to line up properly. I have a piece of previously soaked paper here. You need wet paper so that the print will actually come off. We have previously uh, checked the pressure and evened it out. So let's put it through and see what, see what we get. <clears throat> Hello everyone, be sure and wear your mask because you are not fully dressed without your hat, fairy coat, tall shoes, and your mask.
main job before the pandemic was a stilt walker. These are some costumes that I made. This one is, these are giant ghillie suits. I just took ghillie suits and sewed them together. Big skirts I had sewed more together. My husband made his costume there. He's fabulous. The aliens, you may have seen us at the first Light City Baltimore or one after. This is also ghillie suits, not the moss kind, but the leaf kind. And it is a stilt costume. I'm going to take you upstairs. Yes, I actually live like this, <laughs> but I don't care. The attic is our closet. So these are from festivals that I run before I started making tatter coats. I also made costumes such as this phoenix. She's an entire costume. This is one of the phoenix dresses made from an old sari. I do SCA events, so we have some of that kind of costuming. Take old bridal dresses, dye them, turn them into fairy spectacular things for fairy queens. This was going to be a work area, but it's just too cold or too hot at the attic. We had to buy a bigger house. We bought an old house. It was a tatter house. And we're fixing it up also. So that's the space that I have because we have many festivals, many things that we do in our life. And now that I stay home, I make tatter coats. Here you go. Remember, throw up. Throw up in the air. Up. There you go. That's the crow. I love working here. It's a very pleasant space. Um, I do watercolors oils and uh, many prints. Uh, I've been painting for many years and um, I'm still painting. Hi, good morning. My name is Cynthia Brower. Uh, you're welcome to my studio. It's in my home on the third floor. It's small, but it's adequate. And um, I do watercolors, oils, and uh, many prints. Uh, my watercolors are done generally in the field. My prints are done out in a print studio where I have use for press. And my oils, whatever size they are, are painted on my easel here in the studio. I've pulled out some uh, work for you to see. Uh, I do prints, as I explained. This is a lithograph, which I uh, based on something I saw in um, New Mexico. Uh, so is this one. This is a um, linoleum cut based on cactus plants. Uh, I'm originally from South Africa, and I've been very influenced by the plant forms there which are really spectacular. So this is one point of a cactus. And this is another one. This is an oil painting. I called it um, After the Fire uh, on the mountains. And it's just inspired by the beautiful mountains I saw in South Africa and the burgeoning of new growth, which uh, happened after the terrible fire. So it's fresh and green, but at the same time, it 
is a remnant of what was there originally. Uh, this is a work that I'm painting at present. It's a portrait of a friend of mine. And uh, so it's really a, a work in progress. Don't look at it as though it's finished. This was an initial drawing that I did before I started the painting. These are my file drawers in which I keep my prints. And I'd like to just show you a few. This is a linoleum cut. It's called, um, let me see, Mountain Stream. And it's based on something I saw some years ago. And it's in several colours, uh, the water coursing down over the stones, if you get the idea. This print is based on Salisbury Cathedral. It's um, an etching in about three or four colours, and I call it Cathedral Green. Um, it's some sort of a playful and rather macabre scene of Salisbury Cathedral. I've mixed two mediums here. One is woodblock and the other one is a lithograph. And um, I've called it a canyon moon and it's based on a trip to New Mexico. This is a small um, linoleum cut I made. It's based on the ocean breaking waves and uh, it was fun to do. And so I don't always do large prints some of them quite small. It's a linoleum cut. This is an etching done with watercolour as well and it's based on an African motif. I call it gaming pieces and this one is also based on an African artefact. So that's what I call it, African artefact. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed seeing these. I used to be an art teacher another part of my life. At this point, I'm in my 70s. Things that inspire me are color and the beauty of something and the human form. I, I'm really interested in the spirit of the person in that form, but I do, I really enjoy doing the figure. Hi, I'm Martha Doherty. I have a studio at the Bromo Tower. Um, I've been there for about 15 years. I've been painting for maybe 40 some years. These are some paintings of my mother, who's 102, Adelaide. I'm also including some photographs of her that I took of a Vermeer painting. I did a number of sketches and paintings of the Turtle Boy found at West Park at Mount Vernon Square. The figure done by a French sculptor of his son are very, very difficult to draw. The figure in that particular stance is really difficult. Most of these are done from photographs of the little boy and the turtle. This one I like the best, I think. This is a sketch for a painting of a turtle boy. I'm showing you this one because I ended up doing some paintings of it. Um, early, I mean, in March, I did these. And they were marks at that point. They weren't, there was no green. There's a lot of blue in it. And last week, I added to them. This is another one, which I did during those five months, um, but I, I couldn't I couldn't paint too large at that point. I, I had to stop. 
So at some point, I will come back and finish the background. These are white drawing sketches that I've done over time, which I never show to anybody, but here they are. These are ink. It's a little in-studio. This one here, this model is a wonderful model. A great model too. Some ink drawings. Another Mount Vernon image architecture. It's Charles at Madison. These are images of earlier work, a couple of abstract pieces available on, as prints. One of these images, I did two or three of these again, um, are, they were a commission for a lady that lived in the purple building. I can see the, the West Park of Mount Vernon Square. Um, my work is all about uh, exploring and showcasing the beauty of being Black because sometimes I feel like that is overlooked and it's like capturing that beauty and storing it. Like when you capture a firefly and store it to uh, light up a room. Hello everyone, my name is Alpha Massacre and welcome to my studio. My studio is located at the Crown Industrial Park building, 45H. And when you walk in, you're greeted by my cabins. I store my paintings on top and my drawings at the bottom. And over here is our share space where we usually do woodwork. And I do share my studio with uh, three amazing artists. Julia, Pete, and Aubrey. And back here, I have my personal space. Uh, my space is 240 square foot. Um, yeah, it's just lovely. Honestly, I love the massive walls. Um, it's great because I use the walls um, um, size for uh, creating large works. And I have a lot of fans in here because it's always hot in here. Um, so when I get here, I have to just get to work. I can't just sit around because it's always hot in the summertime. Um, I have this massive table I use for cutting paper. I have a futon in here I use for taking naps because uh, I'm in here all the time. Um, I have this corner that I store works I'm not too proud of. I call it a corner of shame. Um, and over here uh, is just an example of me working um, these things take forever because um, I'm constantly building and building with the charcoal. Um, so it, it takes a while sometimes. Um, my work uh, is, is, is inspired by my friends and family and just being black overall. Um, um, for me, it's just so I can highlight the beauty of black people because um, I know everything that's going on in this current moment uh, with police br brutality and, and and black people getting killed on TV every day, it's just hard for me to watch. Uh, and my work is kind of like an escape for me because I can escape and just and just enjoy the beauty of being black, enjoy my friends and my family and, and everyone around me um, and just celebrating their beauty because uh, people do not know like people outside of our race do not know um, the some of the beautiful things that we have and the qualities that we we have and sometimes uh, that beauty is is buried by the pain and the hurt um, so it's just a reminder for everyone and myself that you know beauty trumps like hate and and hurt so yeah thank you for checking out my studio and i will see you later peace out